Hi guys, Brian from Excess Motor Works and welcome back to my shop. Well, in this video is going to be part two, which I thought was going to be a two-part video series. Unfortunately, I did have some problems and I uh, wanted to share those with you. If anybody decides to build a five-axis machine, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. So in the first video, you saw where we had this uh, mold and we used a peel uh, scanner to actually create a, uh, a mesh from that mold. Um, the problem with a mesh is you can't actually create a direct five-axis tool path. You actually have to create a driven surface, uh, at least with the programs I'm aware of, and that would be Mastercam or Fusion 360 or RhinoCam. As a matter of fact, if you actually know of a five-axis tool path creation program using a mesh, uh, I'd love to hear about that. I, I, it saved me a lot of trying, a lot of problems. So um, where does that leave us? So in the first video, we were actually using a three-axis tool path. Um, three axis for this part was actually not a problem at all. There was uh, no overhang, so it's, it's perfectly fine to use a three axis tool path. Matter of fact, that's what we did with the uh, piece here. So this piece, we started out as uh, in the first video, we did a cut, uh, made sure it matched the original mold so we know the machine is actually cutting correctly. Then uh, I, I went into Rhino and took that mesh and created a two millimeter offset uh, and recut the part. And what that allowed us to do is to actually seal the part and cover it with body filler. Uh, why we do that is because we can't actually pull a mold off of this directly. We have to seal it with something because the chemicals we use to actually create the mold would actually eat the foam. So uh, we kind of defeat the whole purpose. So uh, what we did is, like I said, is we, we sealed it, cut it, uh, or milled it down uh, two millimeters under, sealed it, and covered it with body filler. Well, when we covered it with, with the body filler, we actually had some low spots after we did the original milling. I'm actually going to hopefully uh, do a zoom in here, and you can actually see the finished surface. Um, if I actually do it correctly, it will go one, two, three to the other camera. Okay, here you can see the actual tool path uh, that it was actually using. As you can see, the little fine lines going in this direction. I actually didn't create a tool path that did the opposite direction, the cross hatch pattern, which actually removed those. I think this, uh, this little divot will be fine after we put a coat of primer on it and do some block sanding. Uh, it did create a nice little edge there. Um, but you can kind of see now if we zoom in what the, what the tool path actually did. Okay, so you can see from the tool path, uh, it looks actually pretty good. The problem is, is the, with a three axis tool path, we ended up doing a side cut or swath. And that's where the actual blade is coming into contact on the, uh, on the side of the bit or the side of the uh, mill versus the actual tip of it. And that actually, I don't have a, a, any good examples of it, but it actually created a pretty rough area. Uh, unlike the finished uh, smooth part that you saw in the other uh, in the close-up there. So um, we ended up deciding to scrap this and uh, create an actual new one with a five-axis tool path. So what's on the table right now is actually still a rough cut. This was done in just a standard three-axis. And then um, I actually started cutting the five-axis. On top of that, you can, can't really see it right here. But we did run into a problem. And I'll uh, zoom in over here on the uh, problem area. So we ended up having a machine crash. So when I designed this five axis machine, I took into account this bed, uh, making sure that the bit could never go lower than the bed. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, account for the stops that I had created these positioning uh, indicators or positioning lockdowns. Um, really, because I actually hadn't figured out how I was gonna do it. Uh, so uh, this handle is up here like this, and the bit came uh, like this, and ended up going boom, chewing it all up. Uh, chewed up the handle pretty good, actually took a chunk out of, the, out of the little positioning system there and ended up bending this uh, mill bit. So uh, what I ended up doing is re-putting the stop, the stop that used to actually let it come down to this far and only this far. I moved it so that the stop now um, only is able to go low, no lower than this. Um, took a little bit of distance out of our machine ultimately, but um, it's also going to mean that every time we build something We're going to actually have to have a, a, a some kind of stop on it's going to be foam or wood or whatever But some kind of stop position so that uh, you know, it'll, it'll actually uh, kind of start right at this level uh, Lesson learned anyway um, So I'm hoping to be able to salvage the uh, rough cut I did originally this 3x this rough cut um, I actually had this uh, little indentation on here, and this was caused when I was actually standing up there trying to uh, put in a new stop system, uh, as I described in the other, other segment right there. So uh, I'll drop the uh, bit down 10 mil. Uh, this will uh, do another rough cut, uh, get, rid of, um, get rid of that little area right there, and then 
uh, back to five access. So uh, hope you enjoy. Thank <laughs> you.